Speaking so, of buzzing, we're not you. calling Buzzy yet, but Glenn, we got to call Glenn, Yes, huh? uh, we will get to... Oh, uh, he's on right here. I see Big him. G. There he is. Uh, Big G would probably be the number one pick in the uh, in the media basketball um, pickup game, just because of size. <laughs> uh, a legit 6'10". Uh, we'll get a size. We'll get a size. I, I, I'm not good at this, but I would say 6'9". Make him stand six, up. Stand nine. up yeah. for us. Uh, Glenn, stand Sorry up about. for us real quick. Uh, this Watch might be awkward. Yeah. Your head. This could be awkward <laughs> on the right. shot. Watch the fan. Yeah. The, the crotch. I got uh, to pull it back a, a little bit. We might get a crotch shot here because yeah. he's going to go straight to the – I mean, we're talking yeah. long yeah, wing the wingspan. Yeah, wingspan. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, good size hands. Uh, we'll go with Glenn West from SI.com as our number one pick in the, uh, in the, uh, the pickup basketball game. Glenn, good morning. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm honored. And honestly, Jordy, it sounds like you have a future at TripAdvisor if you ever get bored with the, uh, <laughs> with, so with the, with the radio gig. So. Thank you, buddy. Uh, if you've got it in over there, you let us me, know. <laughs> you got me wanting to go to Nashville now. Uh, yeah. Have you ever been? I've never been to Nashville, wow. no. I'm hoping I can get to go on some more trips. Uh, been pretty locked and loaded here in Baton Rouge the last five or six years. 6'9 so. uh, or 6'10? What are we claiming on the scouting report? 610 uh, and I'm keeping it at 610 technically I'm good. probably closer to closer to 611 wow. but uh, I've been keeping it at 610 so I, I, it's too freakishly tall for me I it wish is I very freakish, especially for a short Italian when you walk up I mean, it is very <laughs> yeah. very intimidating to see him uh, but I would love to coach the guy for sure if we got to pick up media game I got my guy number one pick uh Glenn we're talking about uh football storylines and there seems to be a ton we were talking about the safety position because they picked up two commitments over the last week at that spike my, uh, at that spot Michael Doherty out of Atlanta and then they picked up Ryan Yates out of the powerhouse in Denton Texas uh, over the weekend, very much uh, complement one another. One's a, a really good in coverage in Yates. The other plays well off the edge in Darty. How do you feel about that group after seeing them a couple of weeks in spring drills and going into the off season? Yeah, I mean it's one of the groups that I was really interested in looking at just because we had heard really off season, all off season heading into spring, just how you know how how you know thin they were at that cornerback spot. Uh, how important it was for them to start building for the future at that spot. So landing a couple guys in the you know in the recruiting class was, was obviously extremely important. Um, I've been really impressed by a number of the transfers. I was listening to a little bit of what you guys were talking about before I came on. And, uh, yeah, Joe Fusha has been really impressive. Greg Brooks has been really impressive. But those are guys that are going to be here, honestly, one, maybe two years. And you, you got to start building for the future. And I thought it was uh, really important for them to land uh, Yates and Darty, I think uh, you know, Darty's been on their map for a long time. I remember talking to him a couple of years ago when he was like a freshman. He was getting offers from LSU and looks from a lot of big programs. So uh, definitely a, a, a huge get to get a, a top you know 100 player in the country. And um, you know I think they're just starting to get the ball rolling. I think you'll see some more action here in the next several weeks. Where do you think Jay Ward serves this team best? If if you're given Jay Ward and you say, hey, look, L for LSU to be as good as they can be, Ward needs to play here. Where would that be? Yeah, I mean, I think I think he's he's done really well at free safety. I think that's kind of his his natural position. Um, when he made that transition last year, um, you know, I know it took a little bit well, a little while for him to get used to, but he really thrived. I thought last year, I thought he was one of their more impressive players on the defensive side of the ball, and um, you know, I think he certainly has a future there. Um, and it kind of, you know, I, I kind of go back and forth on this just because they've been trying so many guys out at that corner spot. You know, Jordan Tolles is the guy who's been taking some reps at corner. Uh, they're going to start moving Greg Brooks over to corner, I think, very soon. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they're putting a bunch of guys and throwing a bunch of guys at those boundary corner positions. And I think it allows you to have a little bit more um, – more security with your depth at the safety position just because you got Sage Ryan, you've got Derek Davis, you've got uh, Matthew Langlois, you've got Todd Harris. You know, you've got a lot of guys back there that you can throw out at safety. Then it allows you to be a little bit more, um, I guess, you know, be able to mix it up a little bit more with the cornerback spot. How have you seen Sage Ryan's development here in his in, in this spring going into this offseason? Yeah, he, he looks good. I mean, he's been uh, you know running mostly with the second team as a you know as a as a nickel corner. Um, he's been playing a lot behind Greg Brooks, and I think it's important for him to have guys like Brooks and and Fusha who have done it for, at an SEC level for a number of years come in and uh, be those leaders. Uh, Brooks was talking with us last week about how he's just now starting to feel comfortable as a leader with the group and um, how he's making his voice heard and. 
I think that has an impression on young guys like Sage Ryan, who has obviously so much talent, but just not the experience that a lot of these other guys have that they brought in. So um, I definitely think you're going to see a lot of Sage Ryan. You know, they're kind of now just entering the phase of spring practice where they're starting to, you know, put up positions and put up players who they feel like are, are, you know, are solid and help them at those positions. So um, we'll get to see a lot of him, I think, at the spring game. Uh, you'll, you'll see him on second team and, and possibly get some first team reps as well. But I've uh, been very encouraged by, by Sage. He's, he's one of the good ones. Uh, Glenn, it seems like Malik Neighbors is having a breakout camp. Uh, wide receiver is a position group that people are very confident in the talent level there. Where does Neighbors fit in and what have you seen from him over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, he, he's a first team guy. He's he's a guy that uh, is, is really impressed. He's he's you know, he runs such great routes. I think that's probably the biggest thing that I could say about him is his routes are so crisp. Uh, he, he's able to catch balls in traffic. He has strong hands. Um, he's done a tremendous job uh, as being one of their outside guys. He's really played a lot on the outside with Brian Thomas. Um, you know, they they mixed in Jare Jenkins and Jack Besh as well and. Yeah, really, you just start with those four, and that's that's a great you know, starting four uh, for really any team in the country, much less you, know, you could be getting Keishon Butte back next fall. So uh, they, they're, they're certainly in a good spot with receiver. I really like what Neighbors has done. Um, he's got a great rapport with Miles Brennan. Uh, they've been hooking up a lot for, for, some, for some good passes. He's got a great rapport with Garrett Nussmeyer. Um, and, and really, I think the, the receivers and the quarterbacks have been the standouts so far. Uh, in terms of just how consistently they're playing. Uh, Cordell Music has won for Glenn. Hashtag Ask Glenn inside of the chat. How is Baskerville looking at linebacker? How has Ma- Micah Baskerville been looking at that position? Yeah, so they've been really rolling out a lot of Mike Jones and Greg Penn with the first team linebackers. They really like those two guys. I think Baskerville has kind of been caught a little bit of a numbers game so far this spring. Um, that's not to say he won't push his way into the starting group. He's obviously the most veteran presence on this linebacker unit and obviously has a lot of experience playing in the SEC. Um, you're going to have to use a lot of rotations, I think, um, you know, come this fall. And uh, I think Baskerville is certainly going to find his way onto the field. Uh, but he's, he's been he's been working with the second team so far. Uh, we'll see if he's able to push his way up the, the depth chart ladder here towards the end of spring. But um, he, he's looking solid. He's looking like what a veteran linebacker should. And uh, I think it's just been because, you know, Mike Jones and Greg Penn have taken such big leaps in their game that they're out on the field uh, with that first team. Big Glenn, Glenn West, who covers LSU for Sports Illustrated, joining us here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, Glenn, offensive line was an area of concern for the Tigers the night they pulled out of the, the bowl game in Houston versus Kansas State. You looked at this offensive line and just wondered where were the numbers, where were the, the names, who were they going to get to play? How have you seen that position group start to uh, – start to, 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 to line up here as we come down the last week of spring and knowing what they're going to, to get in the offseason at that, at that spot? Yeah, so it's going to be a position that they're still looking at in the transfer portal. I think that's you know, very much a, a, you know, a box that Brian Kelly wants to get ticked. Um, but there's been some really significant improvements, I think, the really encouraging developments. Uh, obviously, when they moved Will Campbell to left tackle a couple weeks ago, that was – uh, kind of thought of as a as a really really solid move, and he's really impressed his coaching staff with his maturity. Uh, they've they've been playing a lot of Tremont Shorts at left guard, a lot of Charles Turner at center. Um, you know, Cam Wire and Marcus Dumerville are taking up a lot of the right tackle spots, and uh, they've been rotating a number of guys in at guard as well with Cardell Thomas in that number. Um, so they're 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 still piecing it together. I think they're still trying to find the right rotation. I think that Campbell at left tackle and Charles Turner at center have been probably the most consistent, uh, you know, players that we've seen on the field first team. And um, you know, getting that center position down, I think, is really important. It's obviously going to be really important for whoever's behind center and whoever's getting the calls um, at quarterback. So um, you know, Turner's really seemed to take his game to another level. I really like what they they've got with him. Um, uh, and obviously, Will Campbell is going to be a, a superstar in the making. I think I've I've heard some really great comparisons, and uh, you know, a couple guys were were telling me he looks like a little mini Andrew Whitworth, um, you know, just uh, just a, a really mature guy who's really doing a, a tremendous job. He's really athletic, and uh, you know, he's, he's somebody that I think you you can count on from day one just by uh, just by the way he's performing right now. All right, Glenn, everybody wants to know what you're seeing at quarterback. Obviously, this is a really healthy competition for what LSU has, has seen over the last couple of years, and it feels like they got three guys 
that can really play the spot as a, at a high level. And then you've got a guy in Walker Howard who feels like the future of the program. What, what have you seen from that position, and how do you feel about the competition going into the offseason? Competition's been great. Um, you know, starting with with with, with Miles and Jaden, those are those are two trans, those are two guys who you got got back in, in Brennan's case from the portal, and we're able to bring in from Daniels. But um, you know, look, I, it, it's been it's been a really encouraging start for the quarterbacks. I've been really impressed with Miles. He just looks so accurate. He looks so confident back there, and he's hitting a lot of guys. He's spreading the ball out. He's super accurate. He's been hitting, you know, the guys on the numbers on the outside on some of those deep throws, and um, he just looks like a much more poised, much more confident quarterback, which is kind of what you would hope to see uh, from a six-year senior. So he, he's looked really good. Um, honestly, Nussmeyer, in my opinion, has looked like like right right there um, with 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 Brennan in terms of just the confidence and the athleticism and uh, some of the balls that he's able to squeeze in there to, to to receivers that don't look open, but he's able to get it in, and so. Um, I, I think it's been a really uh, great you know, start to spring for those two guys. You know, uh, Jaden Daniels is somebody who they're working a lot with the RPO with. Haven't seen him throw a lot. I mean, he's been doing a lot of uh, these RPO handoffs with running backs and taking the ball himself. And obviously that's a huge part of this offense. That's what they want uh, their quarterback to be able to do. Um, but at the same time, you got to be able to throw the football. And I think that um, right now they're, uh, they're certainly a little bit more confident in Brennan and Nussmeyer in terms of just pure throwing the football. And, you know, we'll see obviously how, uh, you know, Daniels can pick it up. They still only have about 30% of the offense installed. So there's a lot of, a lot of time for, for all these guys to pick it up. And I expect it to be a, a really, really competitive battle heading into the fall. Would you expect any of them to hit the portal after, after spring? It, it's a great question. and just one that I, I, I honestly don't know the answer to. I think the, the biggest thing that we've heard over the last couple of weeks was one of the, the big takeaways I had from Mike Debrock's uh, press conference last week was there's an understanding with, I think, all the quarterbacks that this is going to be a competition that goes into the fall. Um, I think they'll probably give them some uh, some you know broad statements on where they are in the pecking order after spring. Um, but this is going to be something that carries into the fall. And so if you look at a guy like Brennan, you're going to be rolling the dice that you're, you're able to to secure that spot this fall. Um, and if you don't feel confident in that, that, that might be a, an option for him to get back into the portal. But um, the way he's looked, the way um, you know, Nussmeyer's looked, and the way Daniels looked, I just think all three of these guys feel really confident that they can earn this job come fall. Um, and so I, from that perspective, I, I, I would say it would be a tough call if any of them take the, the transfer portal route this offseason. Uh, one more for you on recruit on the recruit again. Whenever Brian Kelly was hired, a lot was made of how he was going to recruit. Could you see, do you think that there's like a tangible difference in his ability to recruit versus Ed Orgeron? Like, does it feel and look different? The maybe the type of athlete or maybe the person or personnel that he's going after. I, I think so. You know, they're, they've been they've been very broad in terms of their search. They've gone east coast to west coast, and um, you know, you, you've seen that a lot. You know, I think for the. Their, their first handful of, uh, of recruits they've committed. Um, you know, Yates is kind of a long, athletic, you know, rangy corner uh, slash safety. I think you could play him in the slot. Um, you know, obviously, Darty, Darty is going to be a, a, a guy who they think has got superstar potential, and they, you, know, you plucked him out of Georgia. You know, they've, they've been kind of staying in the South region here uh, the last, you know, these last two commitments, but they're, they're certainly dipping their toes into a lot of different places. Obviously, Jamar Kane comes from a, a Pac-12 background these last couple of years. I think you'll see him out in the California area, certainly. And um, obviously, uh, you know, a guy like Kerry Cooks, who's been in the Big 12, you'll see him dip his toes in Texas and, 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 and Oklahoma and, and really all over the South. And so they've done they've done a nice job of bringing in coaches, I think, with some uh, fruitful backgrounds in terms of their recruiting, you know, where they hit their recruits. And so – uh, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting. I, I, you know, I still think it's too early to really get a, a, a strong indication of where these guys are uh, in terms of their recruiting style. Um, but, you know, they, 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 they're, they're certainly working hard, and I know that they're uh, hoping for some more, uh, uh, some more lands pretty soon. Glenn, any update on, on John Emery? That, that, that was a, a picture and an image that really got uh, a lot of people talking and buzzing on Friday. It sucks because of the camp that it looked like he was having any update on him, and then how do you feel about the competition at that running back spot? Yeah, so we talked to Kelly on Saturday, and he was very bullish on, you know, it's not a significant 
uh, injury. Sounds like it was a twisted ankle, sprained ankle. They think he could be back sometime this week. Um, get them get him back at, you know, before the spring game, potentially get a couple reps in the spring game. So uh, certainly looked like they dodged a huge bullet there. Um, you know, John Emery actually posted to his Insta- or Twitter or Instagram account that he's all good and that they'll he'll be back sooner than later. So uh, certainly nothing to to I think uh, get over overblown with with the Emory stuff and. Yeah, look, it opened up a lot of opportunities on Saturday because um, Corey Kiner also was not uh, on the field for them on Saturday, and uh, Armani Goodwin and Cavantre Bradford had a huge, uh, huge day. Um, you know, they were they were breaking off some some really big runs in uh, seven on seven, eleven on eleven stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think that this is going to be a, a running back room that uh, even Coach Kelly said on Saturday is going to be a by committee thing. You know, they're they're going to trot out a lot of guys. Obviously, they still don't even have Noah Kane on, on campus yet, and he's going to be, I think, a big fixture in this running back room as well. So uh, until you get all those guys on campus, start to decipher a little bit, uh, I think it's going to be a tough call for Frank Wilson on you know, which, which one of these guys gets on the field and when. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's a good problem to have. Absolutely. And then we have one more from the chat from the bunker. They said that Chris Hilton was running stadium Saturday. Did you, do you, did you see this or notice this? Yeah, so Hilton's actually been out for a couple of practices now. He, I, I did see him running around, and um, he was doing some stretching, uh, I think, on the field before before practice, and then obviously into practice as well. But yeah, he's 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 uh, he's a little banged up right now. We're not sure of the severity of his injury yet, um, but uh, you know, he's he's another guy that you can add into that receiver mix that was looking really good to start spring. Uh, they had him on the outside, and he was really blazing past guys on those first couple of practices and looking, looking the part of a, of an SEC, uh, you know, complimentary piece. So uh, I, I think you, you get him back, you add obviously Boutte into the mix. This is going to be one really deep receiver room and one that I don't really know how you're going to be able to get all these guys on the field, honestly. So more rehab than punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Big Lynn West from Sports Illustrated. LSU Country on Sports Illustrated is which you can follow him on Twitter at LSU underscore SI. You can also hit Big Glenn up on Twitter at Glenn West 21. He's got great work. He's following LSU throughout the spring and great stories to report on those after he goes out to the practice field. So make sure and give him a follow and a subscription. Thank you, Glenn. We'll do this again, man. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You got it. Yes, there he is. Big fella. G West checking in this morning. <laughs> as uh, we get the latest on LSU football, an absolute giant amongst the media members. <laughs> they said he um, is the first pick. Whatever questions are going around the room, like for media, it's always Glenn first. Like, get it out the way. Yeah, it's here. Absolutely. Up, up front. Absolutely. He doesn't look like a Glenn to me. He does not look like a not Glenn. Not at all. Does what does a Glenn look like? like? I don't know, but not Gilbo. that. Hmm? Gilbo. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Get him back on the show. <laughs> That's that what was... I think of with Glenn. You know? <laughs> Do you Not remember that? You crucified. Yes, I remember that. We it lost was, subscribers like that day. Poor bastard walked down from his house, <laughs> he man. He did. Uh, <laughs> remember our roof? 